Hey guys, I hope all is well. Thank you for joining me for this Truth Talk episode. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the movies that hid the truth in plain sight. Let's get right into it. People watch movies to either feel the thrill of an action movie or laugh a little with a comedy movie or maybe they want to feel a fright with a horror film. The point is, the masses watch movies for their entertainment, never looking at the movies as more than that. The thing is, nothing that comes from Hollywood is ever just about entertainment. There's always more to these movies the masses aren't aware of. While people are watching their favorite movies, they have no idea that what they're watching is hiding the truth in plain sight. Some of your favorite movies have been telling you the sinister truth about how our world works and most people don't even realize it. In today's episode, we will be taking a look at a few movies that hide the truth in plain sight. If you haven't seen part 1 of this video, make sure you go check it out after this one, as we went through a few interesting movies in the last episode. Let me warn you guys that spoilers are ahead. The first movie we're going to be talking about is 13 Sins. 13 Sins is a 2014 horror thriller film starring Mark Webber, who plays the character Elliot Brindle. In the movie, Elliot is an unsuccessful salesman for a greedy company that gets laid off for refusing to take advantage of the customers. At the same time, he is drowning in debt and is forced to deal with his disabled brother who requires expensive medications and also his bitter father's failing health conditions. Elliot is at rock bottom and at this point in the movie, it is clear he is desperate for any sort of solution. This is when out of nowhere, Elliot receives a phone call while driving, congratulating him for being chosen to participate in what was called a once in a lifetime game show. He is told that because of his financial struggles, he was chosen to participate in this game show for a cash prize. The man on the phone tells Elliot about his current situation, knowing details that only him or his family would know. This is when the caller instructs Elliot to swat a fly that is flying around in his car. He is told that if he swats the fly, he would be instantly credited with $1,000 in his bank account. Elliot then swats the fly and receives an alert from the game host, alerting the challenge was completed. Elliot then gets another call from the strange caller, instructing him to now eat the fly for another cash prize. Elliot, hesitant, decided to wrap the fly in a napkin and went home to check his account and see if the money was really deposited. When he realized this was all real, he chose to eat the fly. After eating the fly, he gets an alert telling him he had completed challenge number two. This is when the caller explains to Elliot about the rules of the game and how the game works. The caller tells Elliot that he would be given the opportunity to participate in 13 challenges, each worth more than the last. If he finishes all the challenges, he will get the grand prize of a million dollars. He is then told that the rules of the game require him not to speak about the game to others and to not interfere with the game. He is also told that if he fails to complete any of the challenges, he will lose all the money he had earned while playing. Elliot agrees to play, only to quickly realize he had no idea what he got himself into. Each challenge he was instructed to complete became more and more disturbing, as he's told to make a little girl cry, relocate a man's body, and was even told to burn down a church. The final challenge that was worth a million dollars was the most sinister of them all. It required Elliot to sacrifice one of his family members. This movie, as dark and twisted as it is, hides so much truth in plain sight. The movie is all about how the elite use money to corrupt those who are at their lowest, forcing them to sell their souls for success. It also exposes exactly how Hollywood operates. In order for Elliot to get his life-changing grand prize of a million dollars, he had to make a blood sacrifice first. The movie showed the grim reality of the world we live in today. If you want to make it to the top, you have to sell out to get there. This movie also shows how the shadow elite are controlling people behind the scenes. The movie makes it clear that the elite are the ones running the show, as they are the ones that run the bank since they have access to instantly deposit money in his account. It makes it clear that these members of the elite are a part of a secret society and their goal was to use money to turn good people into evil people. Enough money would turn anyone into a monster. This movie shows the audience just that. They make it clear that the elite of our world are pulling the strings behind the scenes in order to control the masses decisions. When Elliot was chosen, he was picked because he was desperate and at that point in his life, it was easy to convince him to sell his soul. This is how Hollywood works. When new talent comes in, 
they are eager to make it. The elite that run Hollywood know this and dangle opportunities in front of them to make them sell out. Just like we saw with Doja Cat, she came in as a normal looking woman who was desperate for fame and is now unrecognizable as she traded her soul for fame and fortune. This movie also reminded me of the show Squid Games as that show also depicted how the elite play with the poor and make them sell out for their entertainment. The next movie we're going to be talking about is They Clone Tyrone. They Clone Tyrone is a 2023 comedy mystery movie starring John Boyega as Fontaine and Jamie Foxx as Slick Charles. The movie is about Fontaine who is a drug dealer that starts beef with another dealer over turf. Fontaine attacks one of his rivals with his car, telling him to get off the block. Later in the movie, Fontaine discovers that Slick, who deals for him, was avoiding him because he owed him money. Fontaine then shows up to Slick's house and takes his money and then heads out. The whole time Fontaine doesn't realize he is being followed by the rival dealers he interacted with earlier. Fontaine gets in his car when the car rolls up behind his car and proceeds to take him out. They show Fontaine pass away in the car as he then wakes up the next morning like nothing happened. He thinks it was all a dream and begins his day only to make his way back to Slick House looking for the missing money he was looking for the day before. When Slick sees Fontaine, he can't believe his eyes as he saw what happened to him the night prior when he left his house. Slick tries to convince Fontaine that he was taken out the night before by his enemies and that he shouldn't even be alive. Slick, in order to prove this to Fontaine, tells him to ask one of his girls that saw him when he came to Slick's house. When Slick and Fontaine find Yo-Yo, she confirms that Fontaine was indeed taken out the night before. She then claimed a black truck that is parked in front of a home they were passing by was the vehicle that left after he was hit up. Fontaine and the others bust in the house and discover an elevator that takes them underneath the house to a secret military base where secret experiments are being conducted. Fontaine then confronts one of the employees of the lab and Slick ends up taking him out by accident after sniffing a mysterious white powder. Fontaine then discovers his body laying on the table with the hole still in it, proving he was indeed hit up the night before. They then run out the lab, making a run for it to Yo-Yo's grandmother's house. In the morning, Fontaine gets his crew and they all head back to the house only to find that it has been evacuated. Even the elevator was removed. Shortly after this, they discovered that they have another lab underneath a nearby church. While at the church, they notice that the church people are acting strange. When everyone leaves the church, they find a lever that opens up the elevator, leading to yet another lab. This is when the three discover just what's really going on. The three discover that the government had been running secret mind control experiments on the entire town. They also discovered that the government had laced the town's food with the white powder slick had snipped earlier that made him happy. This made the chicken addictive and made those consuming it forget about their problems in front of them. This white powder was also being put in drinks they consumed and also hair products they put on their heads. They also realized that the music was being created to manipulate the listener, literally calling it mind control music during one of the scenes. They also showed the government had people in rooms performing experiments on them that clearly appeared to be MKUltra. Lastly, they showed that they were cloning people from the town in order to replace them whenever they got taken out. In the movie, the reason the government was doing all of this was to try to achieve what they called peace by whitewashing black people into white people using MKUltra mind control and generational breeding. Fontaine discovers that he was cloned and put in place to keep the town from prospering in order for the government to continue to be able to do their experiments on the town going unnoticed. They kept Fontaine dealing to prevent the town from being gentrified. This movie, as bizarre as it was, revealed so much truth hidden in plain sight, I couldn't believe my eyes. This movie straight up admitted what the elite have been doing the entire time. It hit on so many points that I don't even know where to start. The movie is all about how the elite are controlling the urban population through the music, food, drinks, and even hygiene products. This is all true. We know the music industry is controlled by rich, powerful executives who tend to be older white men. These men use artists to push agendas and manipulate the urban communities to act in the way they want them to act. They provide billions of dollars to sign rappers who are spreading the agenda through their music, programming young urban kids to throw away their lives trying to be like these rappers. They use the music to indoctrinate the youth into the gangster lifestyle, then hire the police to lock up those very same kids they influence with the music. This is how they brainwash the entire community. In the movie, they also show them lacing the food and hygiene products with this chemical. This is also happening in real life. We know that they have put 
hazardous additives in foods that not only destroy our health but also causes mental complications. Most of the foods sold at Walmart and other grocery stores are full of these hazardous additives and toxic cooking oils that are destroying the health of the urban communities. I was born and raised in the Bronx and I saw firsthand the food options available for those growing up in the hood. We had chicken spots and Chinese restaurants on every corner. The supermarkets had small produce sections with no organic options in sight, while having massive freezer sections packed with frozen highly processed foods. The hygiene products are also packed with hazardous chemicals that are known to cause cancer amongst other health conditions. In the movie, they also show the government conducting mind control experiments on the people. And if you've been watching my channel, you know the government also did this as well. And I believe they're still doing it to this day. If you regularly watch my channel, then you should already know about MKUltra. MKUltra, for those who don't know, was a confirmed secret operation that happened back in the 1960s, where the CIA performed mind-altering experiments on unknown victims. The CIA used substances and other methods to try and wipe a person's mind and reprogram them as an obedient slave. According to the CIA records, this operation was ended in the 70s, claiming it was unsuccessful, but we know this isn't true. In my opinion, MKUltra never ended, and at this point, they have mastered the technique. Just like in the movie, these experiments were done right under the noses of the civilians in hospitals, prisons, and other facilities. One of the most obvious things people believe this movie revealed was that cloning is real. But I'm still not quite sure about that. I saw this whole cloning thing as them showing that they have control over those that have influence. Fontaine was essentially created to play his part and push their agenda. Now don't get me wrong, I don't think that cloning is impossible, as there are examples of cloning, but not in the way people think. There are companies that will clone your pet. The way it works is that they take DNA from your pet and then recreate your pet with that DNA. But this new clone pet must go through the full life cycle, meaning they must be born and go through the aging process from infancy to adulthood. So is cloning possible? Yes. But does it work like it's presented in the movies? No. People think this scene is confirmation that rappers are being cloned. But I think this isn't the case. I believe this was put in the movie to overshadow the rest of what's revealed. Most people are going to watch this movie and only care about the clone scene because of what recently happened to Jamie Foxx, not realizing all the truth that lies in this movie. Honestly, if you haven't seen this movie, you should give it a watch, as it's truly disturbing how the elite laugh in our faces with this movie. Obviously, there's aspects of this movie that are over the top, but it still presents the undeniable truth. The next movie we need to talk about is Hostel. Hostel is a 2005 horror film that starred Jay Hernandez as Paxton Rodriguez and Derek Richardson as Josh Brooks that play two American tourists visiting Europe with their friends. While in Amsterdam, they meet a man who convinces them to go to Slovakia to stay at a hostel that's filled with beautiful women. Two make their way to the hostel and they find exactly what they were looking for. They are placed in rooms with two women and they go party with them all night long. Not long after, things start going left as the friends start getting picked off one by one, disappearing after hanging out with the girls. By the end of the movie, it is discovered that the tourists were being kidnapped and taken to a torture dungeon where the elite pay big money to have an opportunity to torture a victim and take them out however they please. The organization is ran by the elite for other elitists to go participate in this evil. This movie is highly disturbing and I wouldn't recommend you guys watch it, but it still has so much truth hidden in plain sight. We all know that so many people go missing every day, never to be seen again. At this point, it is a known problem that children and adults are being sold by evil individuals all around the world. This movie revealed where some of these missing people end up. Like we have spoken about several times on this channel, our world is ran by some disturbing people who are occultists, people who practice ritual magic and satanic sacrifice. On the deep dark web, it is rumored that private stream rooms for the rich and twisted exist where they can pay to see this sick stuff shown in this movie. This is what happens in the dark. This is what the elite are into. This movie reveals what the elite do at their private balls. They hunt the poor they see as peasant for sport. The next movie we're going to be talking about is Ready or Not. Ready or Not is a 2019 film starring Samara Weaving as Grace Thomas and Mark O'Brien as Alex Thomas. In the movie, Grace just married into the Thomas family, a wealthy family, when she's invited to stay at the family's estate. While at the home, she's instructed that the family made a deal with a man named LaBelle to build the LaDamas fortune. In exchange, they will participate in a family tradition every time a new person is married in. 
At this point, they start the event by having Grace pull a card from the Libelle's puzzle box where she pulls the hide and go seek card. Grace is then instructed to hide, not knowing what is soon to come for her. After Grace hides in the house, Alex comes looking for her, telling her that she must escape as her family is going to try to sacrifice her to the devil. This is when it's revealed that the family actually made a deal with the devil, and the devil gave the family their fortune as long as they performed this sacrifice ritual whenever this card was picked. In the movie, when the family fail to sacrifice Grace, they all explode, showing that the deal with the devil was real. This movie once again showed us that in order to be a part of the elite, you must sell your soul. It also showed us how the elite have to perform ritual sacrifices to appease the one that gave them everything. The movie was full of satanic and masonic symbols, showing exactly what this family was a part of. We saw just what the elite have to do to have it all. In these movies, we saw the truth being hidden in plain sight. We saw what the elite are into and what exactly they're doing to the masses. These were a few movies that once again were hiding the truth in plain sight. But believe it or not, there's still even more movies that I wasn't able to get to in this video. So if you like this video and want to see a part 3, make sure you comment part 3 below and let me know what movies you guys want me to look into next. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.